Good morning everyone. I'm Rika May M. Castro and I'm a, I'm about to report the principles for teaching speaking skills. Teaching can be difficult when the students are not speaking nor see the need to practice speaking in English. For whatever reason, students feel inclined to speak out and express their opinions and views. That's why there are seven key principles to teaching speaking skills and hopefully principles to follow when teaching English. The key to these principles according to Brown 1998 is to keep the student in mind when planning your course of action and making sure the students are comfortable producing English as an oral language. So the first principle is Focus on both fluency and accuracy depending on your objective. The trouble most teachers have is when having speaking-based activities in class, that focusing on production, not necessarily, not necessarily on the accuracy of the grammar or pronunciation. When we say speaking-based activities, these are activities that involve speaking like brainstorming role playing storytelling reporting and simple activities like describing the feature activity and many more that aim is to enhance also enhance and also to practice speaking skills of student that focuses on production or in presenting or performance and not necessarily on the accuracy of the grammar and pronunciation of a child that's why teacher play a big role in student development of their speaking skills so what should what should teacher must do now teacher need is to make sure that his or her tasks have a linguistic language based objective that have that objective about the lessons that the teacher want his or her student to learn and use to achieve its goals and seizing the opportunity to help students to perceive or understood using the building blocks of language or the system of symbols and rules that is used for meaningful communication and also we need to remember the learners needs from language base focus on accuracy to message base focus on interaction meaning and fluency even in the smallest smallest needs of the students this means when doing an activity or game make sure you have an objective going in which focuses on giving the students opportunities to build their speaking skills and keep in mind that each strategy or technique you use make it meaningful to the student and helpful to their development of fluency and accuracy of speaking skills speaking proficiency can be measured through fluency and accuracy and that's the first principle which is focus on both fluency and accuracy depending on the objective the second one is provide intrinsically motivating techniques when we say intrinsic motivation means you do things because it's enjoyable and interesting rather than because of an outside incentive or pressure to do to do it such as reward or deadline unlike extrinsic motivation you do the activity in order to get an external return or external reward in return and also because you will receive a reward for example you're reading a book because you enjoy reading 
and have an interest in the story or the subject rather than reading because you have to write a report on it to pass a class. So, intrinsic motivation techniques um, appeal the students' um, ultimate goals and interests. As mentioned in listening principles, um, the teacher's job is to feed the student's desire for knowledge, status, achieving competence, and autonomy in speaking. It is to show how the activity can benefit them because many times the students do what they are, what they are told without knowing the reason. If we can find ways to motivate and get the students to part participate, it will be uh, rewarding for both, uh, for both sides. Another examples are participating in any sport because it's f fun and you enjoy it rather than doing, rather than doing it to win an award. Another is learning a new language because you like experiencing new things and not because your job requires it and that's the second principle which is to provide intrinsically motivating techniques for the students and the third one is encourage the use of authentic language in meaningful context this is perhaps the most difficult principle to follow or even grasp in many situations in, in school with, with more focus and time being dedicated to test preparations and completing the curriculum. It can be easy to just complete um, easy drills and mini activities which produce scripted, uh, scripted answers from the students. It takes energy and creativity to devise or construct authentic context or the way our knowledge used in real situation and to have meaningful interaction. But with the help of a storehouse of teacher resource materials, it can be done. It is by providing um, authenticity and authentic materials. Um, that give meaning to the lesson and having relevant and meaningful context gives the student experience with the language that they will actually use outside of class and also providing meaningful feedback to students. It also helps student, students to prepare for the real world of communication guide them towards the language they need for a particular context and motivate them to communicate because they help make communication real and that's the third principle which is to encourage the use of authentic language in meaningful context the fourth the fourth one is provide appropriate feedback and correction in most ESL situations students are dependent on the teacher for for feedback in all aspects of the language it is your responsibility to, to provide accurate accurate and useful feedback to the student to help them learn and grow and Keep in mind the language focus, but also remember that learning English is not a linear path and the knowledge and understanding of different aspects of language are necessary to improve. When giving feedback, make sure it is comprehensible to the student and allows them to analyze and fix their mistakes. It is important that you take advantage of your knowledge of English to inject the kinds of corrective feedback that are appropriate for the moment. Because providing appropriate feedback 
and correction for students will help them to improve their speaking skills and evalu and by evaluating themselves um, they will be able to monitor their um, improvement or achievement in a particular aspect using authentic feedback and self-evaluation can help students in enhancing their speech performances in school because um, reflection and self self rating of the students is very important and that's the fourth one which is to provide appropriate feedback and correction the fifth is capitalize on the natural link between speaking and listening it may be seem common knowledge but but the techniques used to teach speaking also involve aspects of listening don't lose out on opportunities to integrate these two skills as you are focusing on on speaking goals listening goals may coincide naturally and the two skills can reinforce each other skills in producing language are often initiated through comp comprehension so assisting students in their listening skills will go a long way to helping them understand speaking so the two skills which is which are the speaking and listening can reinforce each other skills in producing language are often initiated through comprehension listening is receptive skills while speaking is productive skills so a good listener is a good speaker and speaking will not be able to produce if we don't listen first principle five capitalize on the natural link between speaking and listening for the principle six give students opportunities to initiate oral communication a good deal of of typical classroom interaction is initiated by the teacher we ask questions, give directions, and provide information while the students are conditioned to only speak when to spoken to. It is common especially when the mode of education is face-to-face, um, -face, wherein the teacher is centered, and most of the time, the teacher will be the one, will be the only one talking and the students is just listening but um, we need to have or to give opportunities also for students to speak that's why it is important that we have a guide in students learning which is the lesson plan and to include activities that will help and require them to speak and share their thoughts opportunities opportunities to initiate oral communication is important in enhancing their speaking skills and the last one is encourage development of speaking strategies students are allowed to learn from the teacher and are assessed based on their performance in tests and other performance based on evaluations however the growth and development of different english skills is unknown most of the time the students are able to digest the knowledge but not develop their own personal strategies for accomplishing accomplishing oral communication so your classroom classroom your classroom is designed to help students become aware aware of and have a chance to practice such strategies as asking for clarification like what 
asking someone to repeat something like huh excuse me using feelers like uh, i mean well in order to gain time to process and using conversation maintenance cues like uh, right yeah okay and then getting someone's attention like hey say so something like that and using paraphrases for structures one can produce and appealing for assistance from the interlocutor to get a word or phrase for example for example using formalic expression at the survival stage how much does cost how do you get to the something like that and lastly using mime and nonverbal expressions to convey meaning there are the principles for teaching speaking skills focus on both fluency and accuracy depending on objective the second one is provide intrinsically motivating techniques encourage the use of authentic language in meaningful context provide appropriate feedback and correction capitalize on the natural link between speaking and listening give students opportunities to initiate oral communication and encourage the development of speaking strategies so there are things that we must remember Several key principles should be applied to teaching a speaking class. The first principle is that to make sure the teaching takes place in an intended way, it is critical to create a high, a high level of motivation. That is the key consideration in the, in the determining the preparedness of learners to communicate. Motivation. Motivation is the combination of effort plus desire to achieve the goal of learning plus favorable attitudes toward learning language. So, effort alone does not signify, 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 so effort alone does not signify motivation but it, but it is the desire and the satisfaction in the in the activity that count according to nunan 1999 to 233 in order to make students feel satisfied and have the desire to get involved in the lesson teachers should do the following things the first one is teachers use the instinct or experience depending on the teacher's qualification to choose interesting topics in order to draw students attention and make inspiration productive skills cannot be developed beyond meaningful context in addition unreal context cannot help students get involved in such real life activities as job and academic settings according to green 1995 and the second one is teachers can create interest in the topic by talking about the topic and by communicating enthusiasm teachers can ask if anyone knows about the topic and can therefore tell others about about it before the activities start in this way students have chances to express their ideas meaningfully and teachers can explode their previous knowledge to get them into the lesson the, for the example of this is the is when um before starting the discussion of a teacher he or she will ask first if 
we know about this word or about this and also teachers can ask student students to make guesses about the content and to discuss what happens which in inspire students curiosity and they're wanting to find out the truth so they have a reason to attend to the lesson and to talk for themselves additionally teachers can ask several guiding questions before the activity and provide necessary information without telling what students have already known to create stronger motivation according to Harmer 2002 253 and the third one is motivation is raised in a lesson also by the fact that teachers help to create a relaxed no anxious atmosphere which helps even weak and reluctant students this can be done through some activities such as playing guessing games doing the rehearse rehearsal in small groups before speaking in front of many people or practicing speaking under the guidance of the of the teachers through drills repetition mechanical mechanical exercises first according to Harmer 1995 234 and 235 in the case students feel fear of mistakes teachers can encourage them to take risks and focus on content rather than the form and the fourth and the fourth one is teachers should give appropriate level of difficulty and not too difficult nor too easy for students may feel bored and finally teachers had better employ meaningful meaningful learning with meaningful activities relevant to the real life to get students to talk about themselves and that's the first principles the second principle is when students are motivated enough to get involved in the lesson teachers should give them the maximum number of opportunities possible to practice the, tar the target language in meaningful contexts and situations which helps the facil facilities acquisition for all learners rather than the grammatical explanation or linguistic analysis according to Nunan 1999 241 and it is because learners must learn to develop the ability to use language to get things done in real life outside the classroom for the applications of the seven principles um, there are several ways to apply this point um, to teaching according to different stages of learning English the students are divided into two levels so that it's easy to solve their problems using the principle for the elementary level most students don't have the habit of speaking so they find it very hard to open their mouth and producing the language that is why the greatest challenge they're, they're facing at this level most of them are very shy and even totally unfamiliar with the target language therefore in order to get students to talk teachers necessarily employ repetition drills or mechanical practice according to Harmer 1999-60 and this can be done by teaching its individual pattern at a time and then practice with the pattern mechanically and repetitively after the teacher first in this way teachers help students get into the habit of speaking and gradually build up their confidence to use the language without reluctance and then teachers have students work in pairs practicing the patterns through questions and answers 
and talking about relevant and meaningful things of themselves. So there are some other speaking activities teachers can make use of. For example, students work in pairs. One has a number of elements like pictures arranged in a certain way. And the other student has the same but loose and has to arrange them in the same way by talking to his partner. And one more suggestion is that students role play in formal social occasions where they meet a number of people and introduce themselves. According to Harmer, 1999, 95, and 96. And that's for the application of principles for the elementary level while for the upper level um, many students may encounter the problem that they have knowledge of the topic but don't know what to say how to speak out the understanding which lies deep in their minds possibly accordingly to assist students with some ideas to talk, teachers work out several ways that help to project students' thoughts into different directions to get ideas. For instance, students produce a new terence and then ask themselves different questions like who, what, which, how, where, when, why, and what. To answer themselves, those kinds of questions will help them to have many things to say and therefore can speak at length. In order to describe a third place or thing, students can deploy the technique called descriptive formula in which they use several adjectives to depict and then give some sentences that help that help support the ideas and to explain the adjective according to reflex 4000 2002 49 students may talk about any topic choosing to mention the reason the time the place the benefit advantages cause harms difficulties obstacle obstacles and etc in their talk so that they can have something to say and shouldn't struggle with their running out of ideas. By reflex 7000, 2002, 104 to 106. And besides, in order to offer chances to students to speak, uh, teachers should employ a more meaningful task. For example, students work in pairs. Each has, each has similar similar pictures but with differences through talking to each other they have to find the differences another activity is that students work in groups give a talk on a given topic or students are presented with a normal dilemma for example a student is caught cheating in an important exam Give the students circumstances which of five possible courses of action should be allowed, should be followed. Groups reach a consensus. Give the students circumstances which of five possible courses of action should be followed. Groups reach a consensus. According to Harmer, 1995-96. Those, through those kinds of activities above, students are exposed to many chances to talk at length about whatever topic they choose. The problem now is that how they can speak accurately and fluently. Thirdly, there should be a requirement of accuracy and fluency and the way to integrate, to integrate them properly into speaking. However, thus, thus should be employed to communicate meaning 
without too much focusing on accuracy and to encourage fluency to help learners explore creatively ways of expressing themselves. Therefore, the course needs to vary them the emphasis on fluency and accuracy like the principal one in the above according to Carter and Noonan 2001-18 and that's all my report um, thank you for listening I hope um, you learned something and I hope we are able to apply it to ourselves and also to our future students Bye.